Hello everyone, welcome to Target JS and in this video we will see 15 women members of the Constituent Assembly who represented the real power of feminism in India. So this video is mainly to remember the women's contribution who helped in drafting the Indian Constitution. But remember one thing that out of 299 members of the Constituent Assembly, 15 were women and they played a key role in constitution making and they are popularly called as women architects of the India. So the first person is Sucheta Kriplani. See, she was remembered for her role in the Quit India movement of 1942. And after independence, she served as an MP from New Delhi and then also as the Minister of Labour, Community Development and Industry in Uttar Pradesh state government. And she was India's first woman chief minister serving as the head of the Uttar Pradesh government from 1963 to 1967. Next is Vijayalakshmi Pandit. She was the sister of India's Prime Minister, that is Jawaharlal Nehru. And in 1936, she was elected to the Assembly of the United Province. And in 1937, became Minister of Local Self-Government and Public Health. And she was the first Indian woman to become a Cabinet Minister. Remember this point. Next person is Sarojini Naidu. Very famous. See, Sarojini Naidu participated in the second roundtable conference along with Gandhiji and Madan Mohan Mal Malviya. And she was also jailed along with Gandhiji, uh, Jawaharlal Nehru, Malviya and others for participating in the SALT March when first roundtable conference took place in London. And she played a leading role in the civil disobedience movement and was jailed along with Gandhiji and other leaders. And in 1942, she was arrested during period of the Quit India movement. Next person is Amu Swaminathan. See, she is the one who said while drafting the constitution that People outside have been saying that India did not give equal rights to her women. Now we can say that when the Indian people themselves frame their constitution, they have given rights to women equal with every other citizen of the country. Next person is Dakshani Velayudan. She was a parliamentarian and a leader of the depressed classes. And she belongs to Pulaya community and she was among the first generation of people to be educated from that particular community. And she agreed with Ambedkar giving up the demand for separate electorates or giving instead for moral safeguards and the immediate removal of their social disabilities. And since uh, she was a Dalit leader, she strictly opposed forced labor. Next person is Hansa Jeevraj Mehta. See, she wrote many books for children in Gujarati and also translated many English stories including Gulliver's Travel. And she was elected to the Bombay Schools Committee, Committee in 1926 and became President of All India Women's Conference in 1945 and 46. And she opposed personal laws in every religion and demanded for the Uniform Civil Code. Next person is Kamla Chaudhary. She was a Vice President of the All India Congress Committee in its 44th session and was elected as a member of the Lok Sabha in the late 70s. Next person is Leela Roy. She was a radical leftist politician and reformer and a close associate of Netaji Shivas Chandra Bose. And she took part in the civil disobedience movement and was imprisoned for six years. And on her release in 1946, she was elected to the Constituent Assembly of India. Next person is Malati Chaudhary. In 1933, Malati Chaudhary formed Utkal Congress. Samajwadi Karmi Sang along with her husband which later came to be known as the Orissa Provincial Branch of the All India Congress Socialist Party. In 1934, she joined Gandhiji in his famous Padyatra in Orissa and she protested against the proclamation of emergency by Indira Gandhi and was eventually imprisoned. Remember this one. Next person is Purnima Benaji. I didn't find her image. So she was arrested for her participation in the Satyagraha and Quit India movement and one of the most striking feature of Purnima Banerjee's speeches in the Constituent Assembly was her com commitment to the socialist ideology. Remember this, all the sociology optional people. And she was responsible for engaging and organizing trade unions, Kisan meetings and work towards greater rural engagement. Next person is Annie Mascarene. Annie Mascarene was an Indian freedom fighter and member of parliament from Tiruvannathapuram, that's in Kerala. And she was one of, one of the members of the Constituent Assembly of India and served on its select committee that looked into the Hindu court bill. Next person is Rajkumari Amrit Kaur. She was the founder of the All India Institute of Medical Science, AIMS. 
and she was a firm believer in women's education their participation in sports and their health care next person is renuka ray she was the daughter of satish chandra mukherji an ics officer and charulata mukherji a social worker and member of the all india women's conference aiwc and in 1934 uh, as legal secretary of the aiwc she submitted a document titled as legal disabilities of women in india a plea for a commission of inquiry she is the one who who opposed reservation even for the women as she believed that reservation is an attack attack upon one's intelligence and integrity remember this very important point next person is begum azaz rasul she was the only muslim member woman member of the constituent assembly only muslim woman member of the constituent assembly remember this and in the year 1937 elections she was elected to the up legislative assembly and uh, she is the one who supported india's membership to the commonwealth and the last person is durga bai deshmukh she was the chairwoman of several central organizations like central social welfare board national council for women's education and national committee on girls and women's education and she was also a member of the parliament and the planning commission and she suggested amendments in judiciary like process of appointing judges so because of the voices of these women leaders india became member of the commonwealth on may 1949 and article 17 of the constitution that is untouchability was made enforceable in court of law article 44 of the constitution calls for uniform civil code in the country because of these people and reservation was launched on the basis of social and educational backwardness but not the economic one so that is all about 15 women members of the constituent assembly who represented the real power of feminism in india and if you like this videos then please like share and subscribe to this channel thank you